If someone had told Wendy that she would have to work in the taxi service one day, she would have never believed it. But when you're a single mother raising three children, you often have to think out of the box. Wendy divorced her husband on his initiative about eight months ago. It's hard to say whether Brian ever truly loved his wife, or if he was just pretending. In any case, he left his family for another woman without much hesitation. Wendy wasn't handling the divorce well. It was all very unexpected and turned her life upside down. Making sure to keep her eyes on the road, the woman maneuvered between the rows of cars and didn't even notice as she plunged into her sad memories. Wendy's father died in a car accident when she was five years old. The woman was never able to forget the tearful face of her mother, who became a widow way too early in life. Wendy always felt that for some inexplicable reason, her grandparents treated her with a fair amount of coolness. Of course, it made the woman feel very uncomfortable, but she didn't learn the reason behind such treatment until a few years later, when her mother got sick. Deborah Harris never had any problems with her health. She didn't smoke or abuse alcohol. Therefore, when the woman started having chest pains, she didn't pay much attention to it thinking that it was just a common cold. But when the pain intensified and she started feeling nauseous all the time, Deborah realized that something more serious was going on. The doctors ran tests and diagnosed Deborah with late-stage lung cancer. She needed several rounds of chemo and pain medication. Wendy was barely 18 at the time. The poor young woman believed with all of her heart that her mother would be able to beat the insidious disease. But Deborah felt that she wasn't going to make it and that chemotherapy wouldn't help her. It was then that the woman decided to tell her daughter the truth, which would change her life forever. Forgive me, dear. I should have told you earlier. Your father and I adopted you from an orphanage. I couldn't have biological children, but when I saw you at the orphanage, I immediately knew that you were my daughter. The caregivers said that you were left in a wicker basket at the door of the orphanage. There was also a note there too. I don't remember exactly what it said, but I know that it was a woman named Rebecca asking for your forgiveness and promising to come back for you soon. Deborah Harris said, suffering from shortness of breath. Wendy was at a loss for a brief moment, but she wasn't mad at her mother. She quickly came to her senses and gave Deborah a hug. Mom, please don't think about anything bad, please. You will definitely get better. I know that a mother is the one who raises you, not the one who gives birth to you. Deborah's eyes filled with tears. At that moment, she realized that her daughter's response was the best reaction she could have ever hoped for. Looking lovingly at Wendy, the woman stroked her daughter's hair and involuntarily thought back to the times when she was still healthy and her life was like a true fairy tale. Realizing that she didn't have long to live, Deborah tried to prepare her daughter for such an outcome as best she could. But nevertheless, her passing was still a tragedy for Wendy. The death of her mother divided the young woman's life into before and after. Poor Wendy couldn't fight it and fell into a deep depression. Left an orphan, Wendy could barely find the strength to live on. But she did and even got a job as a waitress in a cafe. Everything was going relatively well until the moment she met Brian. A handsome and sociable young man became Wendy's first boyfriend, and later her husband, whom she loved with all of her heart. First the young couple had baby Bobby, then beautiful Sarah, and finally another son, Liam. The most interesting thing that it was Wendy who insisted that they have so many children, because she felt that she couldn't be happy otherwise. Unfortunately, having a big family turned out to be a problem for Brian. He felt that it kept him from living the life he wanted. When Wendy persuaded her husband to have more children, she truly believed that they would make him happy, filling both of their lives with joy. But Brian had a different take on the matter. All the man needed to be happy was a can of beer at night, a big bag of chips, and a football game on TV. Even though he had a big family to take care of, the man didn't bother to find a permanent job that paid enough for him to provide for his family. If someone were to keep track of how often Brian went to work, it would clearly show that he spent more days at home than actually working. As a loving and attentive wife, Wendy tried not to focus on the family's low income and made do with what she had. 
The only gift Wendy got from her husband in their five years of married life was a used Ford, which Brian got for her birthday. However, the man used this car just as much as Wendy did, so it was hard to tell who got more out of this gift. And then, Brian suddenly pulled away from his wife and became very distant and inattentive. More and more often, Wendy caught herself thinking that she was very uncomfortable around her husband, who was clearly indifferent to his family, and even seemed to be avoiding spending time with them. The young mother couldn't help but start thinking that her husband was having an affair, and that it could be the reason for the wall that seemed to have come up between him and his family. Wendy got her proof when Brian informed her that he had filed for divorce and was leaving her for another woman. What about Bobby, Sarah, and Liam? Do you even care about them at all? exclaimed the young mother with tears in her eyes. But Brian deliberately kept silent, after which he packed his things and left. Having abandoned his family, Brian didn't just stop helping his children, but also took almost all of the family's savings. Wendy couldn't help but tear up at the thought of such injustice, but she still couldn't change anything. The young mother had to go through a lot before she realized how bad her situation was. Having three children to feed forced Wendy to take decisive actions, so she pulled herself together and started looking for a job. Since Brian didn't help the family in any way, the financial issue was a pressing one for the single mother. One day, Wendy called a cab to take Bobby to the doctor and noticed that a woman was driving it. I have a car. I could be a taxi driver just like she is, Wendy thought, delighted with her own revelation. The woman liked this idea so much that she only took a couple of days to think about it before contacting the taxi service. Since Wendy could drive her old Ford, she had no problems driving the car that the company provided their new employee with. Now, the young mother worked on a shift schedule, trying to arrange it in such a way that would allow her to spend as much time with her kiddos as possible. In order not to leave her kiddos home alone, she often turned to her neighbor for help. When the neighbor was busy, the young mother turned to a babysitting agency, where she chose a babysitter for her kiddos that she could afford. Wendy always tried to be neat and efficient at her job. At Wendy's request, her car was equipped with protective glass and a GPS tracker that allowed the dispatcher to see her position on the route. Wendy didn't even realize when she started to actually enjoy her work. One night, the young mother got her order from the dispatcher and went to pick up a tipsy young couple from the specified location. The man's face seemed familiar to Wendy, and when she looked into the rearview mirror, she realized that it was her ex-husband in the back seat. Fortunately, Brian was tipsy and cocky and didn't pay any attention to the driver. The man was so busy with his companion that the rest of the world ceased to exist for him at that moment. Wendy deliberately drove very carefully so as not to disturb the couple and not attract unnecessary attention to herself. The last thing the woman wanted was to have to talk to her ex-husband, who could recognize her at any moment. Meanwhile, Brian suddenly raised his voice and said to his companion, Dina, you are so smart when you scam that old woman. By the time Rebecca realizes that her money is missing, we'll be long gone. Yes, honey, it's all thanks to your plan. You're a born Robin Hood. Taking away from the rich, the stranger answered with a flirty smile. At that moment, Wendy felt so disgusted that she could barely stop herself from stopping the car and leaving the obnoxious couple in the middle of the deserted highway. So they're scamming people out of their money. That's some girlfriend you found yourself, hubby, the woman thought, squeezing the steering wheel. To her great relief, she soon saw the outlines of a motel appear in the distance, which was the endpoint of their route. Well, that's it. We've arrived. Here, Take this and keep the change, Brian said in a cheeky tone and put the money into a special recess under the protective glass. Wendy muttered something unintelligible in response and hit the gas as soon as the couple was out of the car. The woman was so disgusted that she was ready to go to the ends of the world, if only it would help her forget what she'd just seen. But when she turned around to collect the fare, she saw a strange object on the back seat. Wendy stopped and decided to take a closer look at it. The mysterious item seemed to be a small leather case with the combination lock and the owner's initials engraved on the handle. 
Rebecca Dawson, 17 Main Street. Wendy read out loud. Brian said something about Rebecca. I wonder if that's her case, the woman thought. Wendy's first thought was to report the find to the dispatcher, but then it would be returned to whomever left it. And that was Brian and his girlfriend, who apparently stole it from its rightful owner. No, I won't let that happen. I'll return the case to its owner myself, and she can decide what to do next, Wendy thought. Since the woman was still on her shift, she decided to deliver the case to its owner after she was done with work. The next morning, Wendy had a quick breakfast and a shower and went to the address indicated on the case. Knocking on the door, Wendy glanced apprehensively at the surveillance camera, pointed at her. I hope I won't get in trouble. What if the owner thinks that it was me who stole the case? The woman thought. As it turned out a little later, she didn't have to worry. House number 17 on Main Street was, indeed, owned by Rebecca Dawson, a single businesswoman in her 50s. Seeing the frightened young woman on her doorstep, the businesswoman let her inside without further ado. However, she simply couldn't help but notice the leather case her guest was carrying. Good morning, ma'am. Sorry for such an early visit. Please don't take it the wrong way. I found this thing in the back seat of my car. I work as a cab driver, and yesterday I drove this strange couple who got distracted and forgot this case in the car. Wendy blurted out quickly. Ah, it must have been Tina. I hired her as a housekeeper two weeks ago. The woman was always complaining about problems in her family, which is why I gave her some extra money from my safe a couple of times. And yesterday, this case disappeared from it. Apparently, the young scammer remembered the lock combination and stole my money. Thank you very much for your help, Mrs. Dawson said and gave her visitor a sweet smile. Wendy relaxed immediately. Well, I got to do some good today, the young mother thought to herself. Meanwhile, Rebecca Dawson asked Wendy to describe the couple and where she took them, as well as what time it was. They're probably still there, although let's have the police deal with them, the businesswoman said and picked up the phone. Soon, the officer took her statement, detailing the identity of the perpetrators and their possible location. Then, Rebecca invited Wendy to have some tea and tell her a little bit about herself. The guest happily agreed to chat with Mrs. Dawson, who seemed like the standard of business style and femininity. Being naturally modest and uncommunicative, Wendy suddenly started talking a lot and shared her entire life story with Rebecca, everything down to the smallest detail. Rebecca Dawson nodded her head sympathetically, until the moment when the young mother told her that she was left at the orphanage by her parents. The businesswoman suddenly turned pale and asked Wendy to tell her about it in as much detail as possible. I don't know what else there is to say. I was found in a wicker basket. At the bottom, under the diapers, there was a note from some woman named Rebecca who asked for my forgiveness. According to my mother, this woman promised to come back for me later. But so many years have passed and I'm still an orphan. But why are you so interested in it? Wendy asked without a second thought. At that moment, Rebecca Dawson turned even paler and started crying softly, having covered her eyes with her hands. Mrs. Dawson, what's wrong? Are you feeling all right? Wendy asked anxiously, but it was impossible to stop the woman's sobs. It was all my father's fault. He was a real tyrant, and I, I fell in love with the construction worker. We had a relationship, but it didn't work out, of course. First love doesn't usually last, but I did get pregnant. My father wanted me to get an abortion, but I refused and I gave birth to a baby girl and brought her to the orphanage. I was scared. I didn't have the courage to go against my father's will, who threatened to disown me. Rebecca Dawson managed to share through the tears. It was only now that Wendy realized that Rebecca Dawson was the same Rebecca who wrote the note and left her at the orphanage. You're, you're my mom. I've been waiting for this moment for so long, Wendy exclaimed and hugged Mrs. Dawson. At that moment, the hearts of the mother and child that had been yearning for each other for so long finally started beating in unison, giving them a feeling of unity and kinship not only in spirit but also in blood. Of course, Wendy forgave her biological mother. She made a mistake in her youth and hated herself for it for the rest of her life. 
But now, thanks to the fateful chain of events, mother and daughter were reunited, and they were 100% sure that they would never part again, and would share many great moments in the future. Suddenly, Rebecca Dawson didn't just become a loving mother, but also a grandmother, whom her little grandchildren grew to love from the very moment they met. Meanwhile, Wendy got to unravel the secret of her past and finally had a real family and could be truly happy, which she had dreamed of for so long. Well, all we can do now is hope that everything will work out in the life of the heroes of this amazing story and that they will always have love and respect for each other in their hearts.